Hey everybody and welcome to the video. This is Josh here and this week we're doing another AMA. I had polled you guys for your best questions last week on the YouTube channel and as always you came through strong so let's just jump right into the questions. First question comes from Anthony Manda and he had asked who's the first fitness YouTuber you watched? That was a great question Anthony. So the very first YouTube fitness video I had ever seen was Obese to Beast John's Loose Skin Insecurities video. This actually was right towards the end of my own weight loss journey and um, I was kind of coming to terms with the fact that I was going to have loose skin. John was really what inspired me and gave me the courage to start doing all of this. Um, you know, seeing his confidence really helped me through my journey of dealing with the, the mental side of having loose skin. And through that, I also found Brian Turner immediately after. So Brian Turner and John uh, were the first two kind of fitness YouTubers I've ever watched. All right, next question comes from Alex Meza. Have you looked into weight loss with jumping rope? I'm getting mine in tomorrow and many people have seen amazing results. I lift weights but want to be shredded so hopefully this will help remove that layer of fat. And this brings up a couple of good points. Uh, jump rope is a great form of cardio so definitely any activity that you want to try and might enjoy is always going to be a positive. But the other side of this, you know, you, you said you lift weights but you wanted to be shredded. The the only way you really get shredded is through your diet. You know, weight is lost in the kitchen, in the gym. More often than not, lowering your body fat is going to make you appear a lot more muscular. And the best way to lower your overall body fat is through the kitchen and through your diet. All right, next question comes from Mary Webster. Did you celebrate hitting your goal weight? And if so, how? You know, my goal weight was something that was kind of a moving target on my initial way down. You know, when I started to lose weight, I, I wanted to be under 250 pounds. And then as I got further in, you know, I wanted to be at 200 pounds. If I was at 200 pounds, I'd be good to go. I got closer, you know, into the 220s and, and decided 180 was going to be my number. Um, so I didn't really have a set, you know, this many pounds, I'm going to be finished forever at that time. Um, so there wasn't really a definite celebration at that point. But um, this was probably six or eight months after my kind of initial bulk of my weight loss. I decided to lean out from 180 down to 170. Uh, and that was the leanest I've ever been. You know, I currently sit now between 180 and 185, uh, depending on the day. When I did get down to 170, I went on a pretty epic cheat day. Probably wasn't the most ideal of things. Um, but, you know, I, I still feel like such a novice at that point compared to how I approach things now. Um, so yeah, I did have a really fun, good cheat day. Um, not much other celebration though. Next question comes from Katrina Kaluza and she had asked, would you ever get another cat or another pet in the future? So most of you probably know I'm an obsessed cat dad. I have my, uh, my almost one year old British short hair kitten named Wolfie. He's around here somewhere. He was just laying in front of the camera down here a second ago. I did grow up with dogs and I love dogs. Unfortunately, right now with Camille and I's schedule, we just don't really have the time for a dog right now. We actually have talked about getting another cat. Wolfie is a very selfish boy though. He, um, he yells and runs around for our attention all day, every day. I'm kind of terrified to see what life would be like if we had another cat. I think he would just be far too jealous. So as of right now, definitely no new animals anytime soon, but I'd love to get a dog at some point in the future and potentially another cat if I think Wolfie could handle it. Uh, and Katrina asked another question as well. How do you get yourself to cook instead of buying takeout? Great question. Um, I think the biggest, most important and impactful thing for me is just prepping my food diligently. I spend an hour or two on my day off and I prep food for the entire week. Uh, now it's not every single meal, breakfast, lunch and dinner, but it's all the meals I know I'm going to be at work or I'm going to be busy. It doesn't have to be any certain kind of food. Just make whatever food you like, track it, you know, freeze some for later in the week. That's what I always do. The other big point I wanted to bring up though, allow yourself to eat out every once in a while if you're not. You know, people will completely banish eating out when they're on a diet just because that's bad and I can't do that. Um, 
when you completely restrict something, it, it kind of has an effect of making you want it more. So schedule a time every week where you can go out to eat and you can enjoy yourself and just allow yourself to have that. And I think it makes it a lot more manageable for you to not do it the majority of the time if, if you know there is a time and a place where that's okay. All right, next question comes from Sachin Sakin. Apologies, uh, but you had asked, love watching your videos. Any plans on a daily vlog? Absolutely not. I, uh, as much as I love making videos, I work right now about 80 hours a week and you know, I can barely keep up with two uploads a week. So there is just no point in my future where I could ever see myself being able to produce a video every single day without massively degrading the quality of what I'm putting out. All right, next couple of questions come from Bob for leader and he had asked what books have changed your life and how do you manage your time with so much on? Great question. I've been pondering that book question since I saw the comment pop up yesterday. Um, I don't have any definite go-tos. I uh, personally read a lot of fiction. I like to read for enjoyment and a lot of my learning comes from audio and podcasts. So I, I usually listen to a lot of educational content, but I read a lot of fiction content. You know, something on the Kindle versus listening to it, it really forces me to engage. And um, I think it's helped a lot with my attention span just to read for fun and um, really sit down and just focus on one thing. I'm a big fan of every book that Tim Ferriss has put out, also a couple of Gary Vee's books that I've read. Gary Vaynerchuk and Tim Ferriss have both had significant impacts on my business strategies and a lot of the mentalities I have for productivity. More recently, Tools of Titans and Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss. He interviews different people that are experts in whatever they're doing and um, kind of tries to deconstruct how they work and how they think. Uh, Lord of the Rings is one that's probably my favorite book or at least one of my favorite books. Uh, more recently, Ready Player One and Armada by Ernest Cline were both two just thrilling books to read. Aziz Ansari's Modern Romance was surprisingly substantial. You know, you think of him as this comedy actor and you know, it's just kind of all fluff or for fun. He, uh, that book had so much good info and was just such a more substantial and scientific book than you'd expect coming from, from someone like him. I, uh, I read when I can, but it's not as big of a part of my life anymore as it was at one time. All right, and the second question in the comment here, how do you manage your time with so much on? Uh, this is something that is always a work in progress and a struggle for me. I am generally working, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's the only way I can fit in what I can fit in. That being said, you know, my work sometimes is doing something like this where I'm just chatting about things that I enjoy or it's cooking or it's going out on a hike and filming a video uh, or traveling and filming a video. You know, I try and make all of the things I'm doing with the YouTube channel, I try and make them as fun as possible and things I enjoy as much as possible because if you're enjoying the work that you're doing, it makes it a lot easier to get through. Um, that being said, I do have a full-time job outside of the YouTube channel that I also have to do. Um, that is a struggle to get through, especially as I get more serious with this. I would ideally have a lot more free time than I do right now, but I'm just doing the best with the situation I have. You know, I think people have a lot more time than they realize, and I think people waste a lot more time than they should. You just have to really optimize and plan and prepare. Realize you're gonna have to make sacrifices. You know, I, I really don't have any free time anymore. So I'm hoping at some point I can be a little more financially independent and work on my own things, on my own terms, my own time, and, uh, and be able to live off of it. That's the plan at least, but we will see. It always takes a lot longer than anyone realizes to get to that point, so. All right, next question comes from Last Call. He had asked, fries, onion rings, or tots? And have you heard of the Kook's new song, Four Leaf Clover, and what's your dream car? Question one, onion rings, fries, tater tots. It's a very strong order for me. Uh, have you heard the new Kook song, Four Leaf Clover? I have not, actually. I'll have to check that out after this. And what's your dream car? I've got two answers to this. So my long running dream car was always a BMW M3 sedan. Uh, 
until the Tesla Model S came out. So either of those would be my kind of lottery cars. I love the design of the Model S from when it first came out and the, the BMW M3 has always just been one of my favorites. Uh, so either of those two cars would definitely be my dream car. Last question comes from Mini Wolfgang, and she had asked, I was just binging on YouTube last night and saw an ad for a bed mart with a spiffy looking bearded guy having a sweet lay down on a comfy bed. My question is this, was that happy bearded guy you? Uh, yes, that was me. <laughs> so I work for Bed Mart. Uh, they were actually shooting a commercial at my store last year, I believe, and someone had canceled last minute and the marketing director for the company asked if my wife and I could be in the commercial as the, the couple. I had no idea they were going to be using those clips for future commercials. And I also had no idea that they were going to start YouTube advertising. So I've gotten so many screenshots um, in Instagram with people asking if that was me. Yes, that is my wife and I. So if you see a Bedmart ad, if you're in the Portland area or in Hawaii. We're the only place that can scientifically fit you to a mattress. That's my wife and I in the commercial. I'll, uh, if I can find a link, I'll add it in here for you. But that is it for the questions, everybody. Thank you again so much for taking the time to ask. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed this. It helps me out a ton. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I put out new videos every Monday and Friday. And leave me a comment down below. What's your vote, fries, tots, or onion rings? Let's get that discussion going. But until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.